Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Emmanuel and in this video we will be talking about custom labels in Google Ads. So first I want to talk about what the benefits are for using custom labels and in which situations you would want to use them. For example, um, the subdivisions that you can currently use in Performance Max or Standard Shopping are the categories, the product type, the brand value, condition, although I've never <laughs> used the condition to be honest, the item ID, that's the lowest point, and then of course the custom labels. Now the inherent problem with the categories and product type values is it's based on a hierarchy. So let's say you have a hierarchy divided by three values, let's say you're selling a science fiction book. You have media, and then you've got um, books and science fiction. Now what if you want to create an asset group going straight to the uh, science fiction section without going three steps down. Now you can't do that with product type or categories, but you can do that with custom labels. Let's say you've assigned custom, la uh, custom label zero with the value science fiction, then you can create a asset group specifically with the um, science fiction uh, targeted straight away without having to require to go three steps lower so that makes your clicking a little bit faster um, normally it's a combination of if it's not too far down of the product type value then I tend to not worry too much but if you have too many product type values then of course it's going to create a little bit of a mess when you're setting up your asset groups so custom labels in that case would be very useful I'm going to now go down to uh, another example which is for example if you have clearance items so you might want to say clearance is yes or clearance is no for the custom label zero if we use that as an example uh, so that for example you can have a lower RS target and a higher budget because most merchants don't want to keep clearance in their warehouse so they want to get rid of it as fast as possible so they want to bid a little bit higher than normal uh, so, t so that the warehouse is cleared so there are many other situations and I've actually created an article with the different scenarios, uh, examples that you can uh, have a look at why you would want to create different campaigns and um, also a, an example on how to create that. So now I'm going to just show you briefly how these are set up in practic, uh, practical uh, situations. So we have here uh, a customer that uh, has sales items and no sales items. So for no sales items, uh, we want to have a lower RS target. And for sales items, we want to bid lower, so a higher RS target. So in this example, we've created a custom label that subdivides the uh, sales items and no sales items. And we can see that here, if we go to all products, we can see that custom label zero has two divisions. So the sale price and no sale price. This is calculated with uh, a feed rule, just a very simple feed rule that detects if there is a sale price. If yes, then um, we just say custom label uh, has this value, sale price. If there is no sale price value detected, uh, then the value no sale price is assigned and then in this case we can then create a performance max campaign specifically targeting for sale price and thus have a different RS target and also a different budget. Now another example uh, that we've created is for example for the product type values these are very specific and th there are two complicated to use in a uh, campaign um, because the values are too long. So I think there are like nearly four or five uh, values in the product type per product. So what we've done in this case is we've just simplified the values by using asset groups um, so that we create, can create specific asset groups for each individual um, grouping. So we have got cashmere snoots. So if we go and have a look at the listings group, we can see that I've used a custom label and it's just women's cashmere snoots. And you can see that I've done that for quite a lot of different things. So this list is not completed, we're still working on that, but this is basically what we wanted. So if we go to product types, we can see that the values, I mean, they are quite similar, but there are many subdivisions within each of these product type values. And they, and we don't wanna change that um, because 
product changing product type values also messes up with the performance um, for uh, the shopping ads because uh, Google looks at the product types to uh, define what product you are selling. So changing that can have a benefit but can also have a negative. So we tend to not want to change it if we are further down the line want to change the uh, campaign structure. So we use custom labels in this case. Uh, another example is also where we have many many brands and we want to use custom labels to separate them into um, different asset groups. So yes, we would use the brand value, but in some cases the barcode does not exist, so we don't assign a brand value in that case. So to keep in consistency with our asset group assignments, uh, we created a custom label for every single product group. So you can see here Serengeti, and then we've got Fendi. So all of these are then uh, grouped using the uh, custom label. So we've got a few. So first we have, uh, you can see that we have here uh, the values 4, 5, 6 and 6.5. That is actually to assign the RS targets uh, using feed rules. So we have 4 and we know that uh, that belongs to the group for 400% RS. When we then go down to custom label 0, we can go down a level to custom label 2. You don't have to, you can actually go to any other uh, custom label you want. Of course, we don't have assigned those values, but you can if you want to. So if we go back to 2, and then we can choose the brand value. I'll buy it. Uh, it's assigned to the custom value. So then we can create um, uh, one asset group per brand. And the reason we do that is because certain brands have more than a thousand products. And Performance Max limits the um, subdivisions for item ID. So if we go to item ID, to 1000 items per uh, asset group. So that creates a problem when you want to have, when you have all the brands in one uh, asset group, let's say you've got 300 brands and all of those brands have, for example, this one only has 89 products, but some have a thousand and then others have 300 or 500. You can't subdivide them any further because it's at the maximum. So Google looks at the whole list. If you've subdivided everything by 1000, then you can't do it any further. So we create an asset group per uh, brand in that case so that we can go and subdivide uh, more refined uh, per item ID for the purpose of actually excluding specific products if we don't want to. So we look at the performance and then we exclude it. So those are the situations that you would want to use an asset group. Of course, there are a lot more, uh, for example, seasonal events or promotions. Uh, you know, if you want to create uh, for each season uh, one specific campaign and you want to reuse that every year, then you can assign a, a season uh, value, for example, winter. And then the campaign, whenever uh, in Google Merchant Center the value is changed to winter, then you can uh, have all the products go to the winter campaign and have assets that are very specific for the winter season, such as adding headlines, descriptions, images, videos, uh, and also uh, the search terms, for example. Uh, so search themes, sorry, not the search terms. So, so search themes is a feature that you can uh, have to assign for each asset group and of course then um, the data that you want to use. Um, so uh, promotions as well, you can have different assets. So th there are many situations you would want a different uh, campaign so that you can have more specific details for the customer who sees your ads uh, in those campaigns. So those are all the different uh, scenarios that you would want uh, to set up asset groups, subdivisions, uh, and you can apply this to standard shopping. I know I've given examples in Performance Max, uh, but you can do the same for standard shopping campaigns. I hope this video has been helpful in explaining why you would want to use custom labels. And uh, in the next video, I will go and explain how to create uh, the custom labels, giving you a couple of examples um, in, in using feed rules or supplement feeds. Uh, and you can also do that, of course, in the at source, the data feed application itself, if it supports uh, you to have those subdivisions or custom labels. If you have any questions uh, regarding these, this topic, feel free to leave a comment below. And thank you for watching.